Friends, the size of the pupil in this case is about 5 mm and it is adequate to do this case for many expert surgeons. But for many of us, this is not safe, particularly in presence of a hard nucleus. So, my thinking is, it is better to use a pupil expansion device in such cases and I have decided to use BHEX pupil expander in such cases. For this, after the initial steps, underfill the anterior chamber with viscoelastic substance. At this moment, I am injecting SPMC. Inject some SPMC under the iris. Make some room for tucking the flanges. Here goes BHEX. Take the device totally into the anterior chamber and then you can try tucking the leading flange at on go. If it doesn't happen, it's okay. Make another attempt and tuck the leading flange. It is centered at around 5 o'clock. Now, another flange which is centered at around 1.30 o'clock is tucked. The forceps being used for tucking the flanges are called BHEX forceps. It opens vertically like a crocodile. And here this is the third flange. Now do a capsulorexis. The capsulorexis can be about 5.5 millimeter if it goes just flush with the arms of the hexagonal people. And here I complete the rexis. So I have got a 5.5 millimeter rexis and it is adequate to do this surgery. You can see the cataract is almost it's grayish black. So the nucleus is very hard. So I have removed some superficial cortical lens matter bevel down. Now I have turned the handpiece made the bevel up and here goes what I say submarine job. The teeth is buried into the substance of the nucleus, travels through the nucleus towards the opposite equator and as it reaches midway between the center and the opposite equator the chopper is used along the traveling path of the FECO tip. And now in the same way the heminucle are chopped. You can see that the nucleus is not giving in it has got a leathery posterior plate. However, with several attempts, I could divide this nucleus into several pieces and now I am emulsifying each nuclear piece with 85% ultrasonic energy. I have used about 400 millimeter of mercury vacuum in this case and aspiration flow rate was 40 ml per minute. Here I am catching hold of each fragment, bringing it at the center of the anterior chamber at the iris plane and emulsifying it. Care is taken and an eye is caved over the anterior chamber stability, over the posterior capsule and here I come out, inject some viscoelastic substance, place the fragment in such a way that I get it at the teeth very easily. 
and this is the last nuclear fragment. I have to take extra precaution at this time. Now here it is. At this time, we can reduce the vacuum to some extent. Sometimes, in some cases, I come down even to FECO on mode and emulsify the last nuclear bit. But if the antichamber is very stable, as in this case, even in FECO 2 mode, we can complete the surgery. So the nucleus and epinucleus has been managed. And the BHEX has kept the people nicely dilated. And now, after cleaning the cortex, inject some viscoelastic substance and implant a hydrophobic acrylic intraocular lens in the capsular bag. Precaution is taken not to cause any undue pressure on the flanges which are over the iris. In one case, it so happened that the flange which is just in front of the main incision went behind the iris. But if even one flange is just above the iris, you can easily bring it in the anterior chamber and just pull it out. An injector system is never required for application of BHEX and removal of BHEX. And now the viscoelastic substance that has been used for implanting the intraocular lens is being thoroughly removed. The capsular bag is irrigated with PSS, the antechamber is flushed with PSS and then using irrigation and aspiration the viscoelastic substance is thoroughly removed. And now the antechamber is becoming shallow so to keep the AC formed, I have injected a big air bubble. Moxifloxacin has been injected into the anterior chamber. The side ports are hydrated. And then this is the final lavage of the anterior chamber. The antechamber should be nicely formed. The intraocular pressure should be on the higher side. There should not be any ingress of fluid from tear film into the anterior chamber. If it happens, go into the eye again and wash it out. Thank you very much for your attention.